We've considered resistors in parallel and capacitors in parallel before and computed the equivalent resistance and the equivalent capacitance. So now let's do the same thing with inductors in parallel. And the goal here is going to be to generalize a formula that allows us to compute the equivalent inductance, and we'll do it based off an arrangement with four inductors in parallel. Now the four inductors here are in parallel because they're all connected the same way across the voltage delta V. The top of each inductor is connected to the wire that is at the potential V plus, and the bottom of each inductor is connected to the wire that is at the potential V minus. Therefore, across each inductor, there's a voltage delta V. And let's assume for the sake of argument that the current I is increasing with time in the circuit, and therefore each inductor is opposing the increasing current flowing through it. So I'm going to draw the voltage across each inductor as opposing the incoming current. And what we'll say is that because these inductors are in parallel, these four voltages are equal to each other. And in fact, they're all equal to delta V. And the goal is to establish how this arrangement behaves so that we can compare it to the equivalent circuit here, where we have one single equivalent inductor with a voltage VL equivalent across it. And recall that VL equivalent is going to be minus L equivalent delta I over delta T. And so we're going to try to get the same kind of expression or equation for the circuit on the left-hand side so that we can compare them and figure out the expression of L equivalent. Now to do this, we're actually going to start with the node law, and we're going to write that I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. Has to be true, the current I splits into four different currents. Now if we do the following, and we take the change delta I over delta T, well, we can claim that it's delta I1 over delta T plus delta I2 over delta T, and of course, so on and so forth. And for each inductor, let's remember that VL, call it VL sub P for inductor P, whichever one of the four that is is minus L sub P delta IP over delta T. Now that means that we can replace every delta IP over delta T with minus VLP over LP. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to get delta I over delta T is going to be minus VL1 over L1 minus V L2 over L2 and so on and so forth. But because all of these inductors are in parallel, all of the voltages VL1, VL2, and so on are equal to each other, and they're all equal to delta V. So we can rewrite the same thing here simply with delta V as the numerator for each fraction, which means that eventually we're going to be able to factor out delta V because it's going to be a common factor. So we're going to get delta V over L1 minus delta V over L2 and so on and so forth, all the way to minus delta V over L4. And if we factor that out, we're going to find that this expression here is minus 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2 plus 1 over L3 plus 1 over L4 multiplied by delta V. And recall that we're trying to compare it to this term here, this equation. So we're almost there. Maybe we can rearrange this a bit and say that actually what comes out of this is delta V is equal to minus 1 over, now this whole thing here, 
1 over L1 plus 1 over L2, and so on and so forth, multiplied by delta I over delta T. Now you could leave it in that form, and you could argue that L equivalent is equal to this, and that'd be true. But in practice, that's not really how it's presented. The way that we present this is by writing that 1 over L equivalent, and we've seen this before, is going to be equal to 1 over L1 plus 1 over L2, and so on and so forth. And this is the same type of math that we found when we studied resistors in parallel. So this is how you compute L equivalent. Careful that what you're actually computing here is 1 over L equivalent, so you have to flip whatever you find on the right-hand side to get the true expression for L equivalent, or the true value if you're plugging in values. So don't forget to flip it. But note that whatever value comes out for L equivalent, it's going to be smaller than L1, L2, L3, or L4. That's just how the math plays out. Let's make a note of that L equivalent is smaller every time than L1, L2, L3, or L4. So you get an equivalent inductor that has an equivalent inductance that is smaller than any one value of the initial arrangement of four inductors in parallel. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.